Hey guys, Tyler here, coming at you with a rare Thursday upload. I usually don't upload on today, but thank you to Cotton Game for sponsoring and making this happen. Playing their new game, Sunset Hills, which is a puzzle adventure game with a heavy emphasis on story. And I kind of wanted to use a story game to actually talk about what I like and don't like in stories, because a lot of you think that I just hate stories and games, just gotta have the gameplay, but that could not be further from the truth. I love stories, especially in games, at least potentially. I recently played Slay the Princess, and that was one of my favorite games I played in a long time, and that's pure story. Awesome game, highly recommend it. Uh, but also, I think stories are one of the most important part of the human experience, so Hopefully this game should inspire some thoughts about what I think makes a great story. Very pretty song. I almost don't want to talk over it, but I kind of think this actually ties into the first point I wanted to make about emotion. Make the player feel something. This, songs are a great way to evoke emotion. This is very peaceful. Our main character, Dog Boy, he seems quite happy. It almost sounds like old-timey nostalgic. I mean, I guess the train too, maybe it is set in the past. Chapter 1, Tobik. It is 3.40 p.m. on September 12th, 8.05. Final destination is Brown City. Okay, so where are we arriving? Well, maybe this letter will tell us. Dear Nico, how are you doing? Is asking me if I'm still writing my novel. Is reminiscing on the past, however, lamenting on the war. I guess they served together in the army. Yeah, so as I was going to say with emotions, uh, generally a story is like a sequence of emotions. It can be broken down into that anyway. And ideally, the emotions should not be telegraphed. Like, you should not know which emotion you're going to feel next. Because if you do, that kind of sours the story. Get a little tutorial. Go to Tobik Town, go to the Kurt Grand Hotel. And I got a backpack a suitcase. Oh, and there's books back here too. This is an adventure novel, Sunset Hills. So it's a story about a writer. Seems to be a common trend nowadays, huh? Making almost meta art, or it's about making art. Yep, back in the war. Some of them are unusually happy, but you know, I guess they're friends. I see now the main emotion I feel is just being content, happy. It's generally how most stories go. Like if we were to have a very simplified story, it could go like happy, then sad, then happy. You can probably think of like a million stories that fit under that umbrella, but I guess they're actually more complex with emotions than that. There's like, you know, actually like 20 steps. Your paper's falling off. Okay, and this place does work on a different time scale because you're talking about something that happened in 763. Interesting. What's up, ticket man? Ticket dog? How do I get to Tobik Town? It's on the west side. I'll need a bus, but the last one just left, so I'll need to wait about an hour. Is there another way? I don't like waiting an hour. I remember the owner of the fruit store is making a delivery to the town. Go ask him for help. Thanks. Yeah, generally when it comes to emotions, a lot of writers will kind of make a mistake where it's like, oh, it's just got to feel good, feel good, feel good, feel good, feel good, feel good, then feel good. But if you do that, there's like no real surprise. There's no intrigue. Generally, if you think that like your reader or listener is like, anticipating like a feel good ending, you should probably do everything in your power to make that doubt them doubt that until the feel good ending actually happens. Right now, there seems to be a lot of exposition. The art style is absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> Sounds are amazing. Sir, you going to town for delivery today. What for? Do I know you? And how did you know I was gonna make a delivery? I heard it from the train conductor. That fat guy, <laughs> you're the one to talk. Hey, I don't think this delivery is gonna happen. The order list is dirty. All things written on it are ineligible. How can I deliver this now? How about I don't deliver it at all? Yeah, that'll show them. But that's breaking the contract. The most important thing in business is credibility, don't you think? Boss. <laughs> it's just going straight for the manipulation. You show me a list, maybe I can help. So I got a list here of, uh, hmm, stuff. I can see the word mint, maybe pounds. It was soaked with water. Do I have something for that? Hmm, well, let's see if I can do anything about that. I mean, it is still a puzzle adventure after all. Why don't I go talk to the train conductor? Maybe he can figure it out. Yes. Nope, never mind. Okay, maybe there's something over here. A little phone booth? Oh, I can actually use it. Who should I call? It's a great question. 8675309. Maybe the baker at 6464. Uh, six, four, six, four. 
I learned this from Rusty Lake. <laughs> Hello, Bernini's Bakery, what do you need? Ah, you've got the proper list. Which fruit store owner? There's so many of them. Uh, oh, his name was Michelle that we saw in the mailbox. Oh yeah, no problem. Take a note of the contents of the list. Okay, blueberries, 25 pounds. Mint leaves, 15 pounds. Oranges, 40 pounds. Oh, oh, so you're, all right, we're picking the one that fits the one. Nuts for 40 pounds, mangoes, 25 pounds. There was just enough to figure out which is which, but not exactly. Uh, you're welcome. Cute. Okay, back to stories themselves. Uh, one thing that I see like a lot of people get wrong is that you should never, ever, 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 ever state the morals of your story for the love of God. Here, take my list. I've got it. Your story has morals. Congratulations. Good job. Every story has morals. You don't need to prove it by saying the morals. In my opinion, it is impossible to write a story that doesn't have like something that you could learn from or read into it. Wow, I can't believe you did it. Since you helped me out so much, I don't want to give up just yet. And here, they're not even stating it. It's just kindness can be given back and forth. If you do nice things for other people, they're more likely to do nice things for you. We'll leave in a minute. You know, you don't have to state the morals. You can just show them. I, I almost want to challenge you. Like, is, is it impossible to write a story without morals or something to learn from? I challenge you to go into the comments and attempt to write, like, a pointless story. Something that has nothing that can be read into. I just, I just don't think it exists. You're like, well, well, if I don't say the moral, what if the viewer comes to the wrong conclusion? Well, if you're afraid of the viewer coming to the wrong conclusion, then you should stop being a little bitch. <laughs> Let them figure it out. It's not a big deal. Sometimes they might get it wrong, and sometimes, actually, the best stories will have, like, multiple possible morals that you could draw th from and people could debate over. I don't know if we'll be on time. Help me see what time it is. How, how, do, I, how do I do that? Oh, what the heck is this? Radio's indicator. What in the ass is this? Oh, here's a okay, a watch. It is <laughs> broken. Oh man, everything this guy has is falling apart. Um, oh, oh, I can see. Even though it's shattered, it's still like 450. Uh, that's funny. I got you, buddy. What? There's only 10 minutes. Should be in time, right? Can't panic. Just listen to some music and relax. Damn it! How come the radio is broken again? Man, you need a couple days off just to sort this out. Uh, let me take a look at this radio. Oh, the indicator is completely broken. Oh, no. Well, maybe in here. Ah, down, up, up, then 3.5. <laughs> Wait, but there's no needle. I need a new needle. I needle it. Um. Oh, I could break this further and steal from here. Uh, well, we don't need that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, put that right on there. Put it at 3.5, the best station. Yeah, there's music. It's time to dance. Don't steer us into a ditch. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. That's the way, uh-huh. This song has always been a favorite of mine. Uh-uh, 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 mm, It's so much more soothing. Why well, even come to our town? Traveling? Sort of. Came to see an old friend. Okay, so this is, the game is actually doing a good thing here as opposed to the bad thing with the letter. They're right now going over the stuff in the letter that was like handed beginning. I thought the letter was a really bad way for exposition, but here is like a natural conversation with people that, you know, done stuff for each other. You know, it's not just info dump, it actually feels more authentic. If it's convenient, can you give me a ride to the Kirk Grand Hotel? Your friend stays there? Oh, he works there, right? No, it is his home. What? What is his name? Doug. Doug Kurt. Doug Kurt, the Kurt master of the Kurt family. That's the Kurt family, one of the most legendary families in Tobik. When Dylan Kurt died of illness, family was left without a successor, and everyone thought that the Kurt family would fall into a decline. Then a few years later, his missing son, Doug, suddenly came back and took over the family business. In just a few years, he brought the family back to its peak. I didn't realize Doug was so competent. <laughs> <laughs> that says so much. i uh, drop you off at the bus stop, and you'll see the Kirk Grand Hotel if you keep walking along the lake. Can you tell me what time it is now, Mr. Kurt's friend? Uh, that's four, five o'clock. <laughs> Good callback. Yeah, I like it. The dialogue actually feels natural. That's a tough thing to get right. See you later, little friend. All right, Mr. Michelle, I look forward to seeing you again. Hey, what a cute town. Can I walk up this? Wait, I can. 
Ooh, hello. Just to make dinner. This kid's going wild and isn't back yet. Okay, just listening in. So, a couple of video game story specific things. It's always good when, like, the player has agency. Like, right now, it actually feels like I'm in a pretty open world and I could learn a lot about the people in any order I choose. It seems like there's a tapestry of people. It doesn't seem like I'm railroaded and it's going one way or another. And I like that. It actually takes advantage of the medium. Like, I should be allowed to maybe even discover things in a different order from another player. Okay, Bernini lives at 26. Interesting, good to know. A story can be a puzzle that you slowly put together and piece together. It shouldn't be like, first you do this piece, then you do that piece. In a video game, sometimes you should just be able to do it in an order that fits you. Make it your story. Uh, another like benefit of video games as a story, or if you want to have a good video game story, is that the story should be inseparable from the gameplay. It should be impossible for like a creative person to take your game and then split it up into two games. One where it's just like the visual novel story, and then another part where it's like solving the puzzles. Here it actually feels intertwined because the, the puzzle that we're solving are actually important to building the friendship so far. And in other games like Case of the Golden Idol, Outer Wilds, the, the, the puzzle is figuring out the story, as opposed to a game like Talos Principle 2 where, oh, sorry, I'll be quiet, where the idea is that, like, the puzzles could just be their own game and the story could just be its own game. I could make it into two games. Don't talk, you're scaring the fish away. Oh, yeah, magnet. That doesn't make any sense. Was the bait not good enough today? I ran out of good baits and didn't have time to buy any. I'm too old, my eyes aren't too good, so I can't just lie on the ground and dig for earthworms. Hey, I gotcha. Also, can I grab this magnet? Sick. That's mine. That'll be useful later. Where's some earthworms? What the heck is this? The, okay. Keep your paws off of this. Maybe a key exists. Maybe it doesn't. Wait, dude, navigating this world is really cool. There's a, so much love put into the art for this. The sounds. Oop. Hey. Oh. Oh. Oh, no. His wrench fell down. Be careful where you're walking. Oh, crap. I hope that's important because that was, that was a hell of a coincidence. I actually love it when, like, sometimes just bad luck happens in a story. But the idea is, like, you're supposed to overcome the bad luck. But people are like, well, it didn't happen because of logic. It was just so random. Sometimes random stuff happens. Sometimes real life just throws crap at you and you got to figure out how to get out of it. Like here, that's some pretty bad luck. So now I got to figure out how to overcome the bad luck. That's why I play roguelikes. I get bad luck and then I overcome it anyway. I don't know. It's cool when stories do that. Holy, that's a lot of people. Oh no, it's our guy. He crashed the truck. Yeah, so I, I got your back. Hey, so which way are you going? Can't see there's an accident on the road? I can easily get to the ferry pier officer. That can't be passed either. It's temporarily blocked off. That's a problem. This isn't the only way to the pier, is it? Of course not. There's a back alley to the pier. Sir, please step aside and don't go get away of our official duties. If you don't pay up, don't even think about leaving. This is a new car worth at least 50,000 doglers. <laughs> How much is your broken car worth? <laughs> Since it's so shabby, I'm kindly letting you pay a little less. Just 10,000. Really unlucky. I couldn't make that much money even if I sold fruits for a whole year. Okay, Agi crash. Spin the truth, my car was parked on the side of the road. You're the one who crashed into it. Oh, twisting things and blaming me. Isn't there justice? I bet you're trying to extort money. <laughs> you you popper, look closely. What kind of car do I have? The latest luxury model. Do I need to cheat you? I mean, yeah, maybe you cheated someone to get it. Hmm. Okay, so they can't figure it out. Maybe there's a bystander. Like, you're here. Maybe you saw what was going down. Hello, sir. Mm. How do you do, sir? Mm. Okay, don't want to talk to me. Pretty cool. You are not reading. Maybe you saw what happened? Sir, it's rude to eavesdrop. Ah, sorry, I didn't mean to. I don't suppose you're around here. Are you new to this town? How did you know? You're carrying a suitcase. Which means you just got off the train and haven't arrived at your destination yet. And there's only one Southern Express this afternoon. It's 4.30 and the train station is about a 20 minute ride for the town. What the hell? Are you trying to soul read me? Introduce yourself. I'm white. I'm whiter. Oh, Nico Grant. Okay, fair enough. I remember a new writer named Nico too. Off their novel, some Hills, Nico Roy. Yeah, that's my pen name. Forgot to introduce this guy. His name's Pinkman. 
Hello, Miss Grapp. I'm Sherlock Pinkman. The hat gave it away. Help me solve the mystery of what happened just behind you. We've been asked to look for a lady, and we've come all this way to find out that she might be in this town. Nope. Oh. Okay, another mystery open up. A lot of mystery. A lot of people I could talk to, but I kind of want to keep exploring. There's a bakery here. Let's go get some bread. Go away! Go, go, jeez. I've been waiting here for 20 minutes. Where's my bread? I'm truly sorry. This chef isn't here today, so the bread is being made a bit slower. Clearly, it's not the bread that's right behind you. It's a good thing I don't have anything else to do today. If I were busy, hmm. What a prick. <laughs> what a mega prick. Nah. Okay, okay, what's, what's going on back here, huh? Why the bread slow? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> there are consequences to my actions. That's another thing about video game stories. Sometimes you can just do whatever you want without consequences, and it feels disappointing. Just the fact that you're able to try to go into that door and then get kicked out, that's funny. That's exactly what I want. Sometimes it'd be like, nope, you can't go here in here. Kitchen staff only. That would be way less interesting than this. I'm just snooping around in the closet now. It's locked. <laughs> Good to know. We got a photo of the, the baking squad. In 794, Bernini won first place at the bread competition. Oh, Bernini. I went to his house, but he wasn't home. Where, oh, where is Bernini? I'm gonna find Bernini. Maybe this way. Oh, Bernini. Where are thee? Eh, strange. Oh, is he talking about his missing tool? Oh, no. Can't you see I'm looking for the wrench? I know where it is. I can't quite help him, though. Wait a second. I just remembered something. I have a magnet. A big magnet just caught. Can I use the magnet to retrieve the wrench? No, not long enough to get it. Okay, I need to attach like a string or something. So that probably means I need to help out the fisherman. But first I need worms. Where can I find worms? Maybe this kid has worms. Phew, chug, 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 chug. This little plane is so chic. I think it's great too, don't you? Do you want it? No. If you want it, go to the Tobik Park. You can redeem it if you win a gift voucher. My dad won it for me. I didn't want it anyway, kid. Gosh. This one is kind of hard. What are you doing here? I'm working on a game that's popular with kids nowadays. I suddenly forget what it's called. It was a game where you use a string to create various shapes and pass it on. My son's been really into it lately. It's Cat's Cradle, isn't it? Oh, well, you know this game. Then you must know how to play it, too. How about it? Are you interested in playing? Whoever messes up the rope first loses. All right, I'm game. All right, we take turns flipping the rope until one of us fails. I'll go first. I have never played this game before. I don't know the strap. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick this. Okay, so I have to, like, grab it in a way. Ha, I lost? <laughs> I lost on my first turn. Okay, uh, I'll figure this out. Okay, let's try this grab. Okay, nice and tight. It's easy as a piece of cake. Okay, very different grab. So it's like I gotta look at the configuration of this and see which of these shapes it maps to? Does it map to... I don't know. I'm not good with shapes. Okay. Ah, I got it. Okay, let's try this here. Oh, nice and tight, still tied up uh, like this. Seems to be struggling. Oh, that looks lost. Well, I lost. Seems to have gotten the hang of it, so this game is quite interesting. <laughs> you played with me for so long, thank you. I'll give you this red string as a souvenir. Ah, I know what to do with this. All right, put it in the suitcase. I want to tie these two together. What I can do is use this to combine with the magnet. Put it all together to make a magnet with string, which sounds very useful. And right, I've got you now. I got my trusty string magnet, magnet string. We're going fishing. Bing! Uh, that's mine now. I know what must be done. Hey, buddy. I got your wrench. Huh? What? It's my wrench. There he goes. Sometimes a good deed is its own reward. At the fix now, I'm wasting too much time. Hey, let's chat while you're at the top of this ladder. This seems safe and fun. I've been so busy lately, I'm planning to go off with my family for a fun trip. I got a bonus just in time. I heard there's a play opening at the Hepburn Grand Theater with big stars. Big, big, big stars. I'll have to catch it. 
Interesting. So this is opening up well. So there's a lot of storytelling that I like in this game. And I trust that you guys can use your own judgment to decide whether this game fits your own standards. Uh, if it does, then check it out. It's on Steam, Sunset Hills. And I'd like to thank the devs again for sponsoring. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful rest of your day. Peace.